Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about a postdoctoral fellowship which is pretty lucrative and pretty well paid in comparison to most postdoctoral fellowships. Now there has been an ongoing discussion in the PhD community about postdocs not paying well and the fact that maybe people should leave the postdoctoral positions as far as academia is concerned and look at industry jobs. So of course there is some merit in this theory because there are a lot more jobs out there in industry and there are very few postdoctoral positions but today's postdoc pays pretty well and I'm going to discuss the ETH Zurich postdoctoral fellowship. So this is essentially in the federal lab in Switzerland and this pays pretty well. So let's look at this postdoctoral fellowship. Now this fellowship was essentially created to foster young researchers who have demonstrated scientific excellence in early stages of their career. So essentially this is meant for young scientists who have finished their PhD and they want to embark on some additional research to improve their resume and also to garner some better skills. Now, the application has to be made by the candidate and one of the important things here of course is the candidate has to find a host in the ETH Zurich University system. So this is typically a professor who works in a research area which is close to the applicant's field and also it could be something which slightly complements the applicant's field. So keep these things in mind. This person is going to be your mentor or your guide or your supervisor as far as research is concerned during your two year stay at ETH Zurich. Now essentially there is a restriction that a professor must submit only one candidate during each application process. So essentially you can imagine that this fellowship being an open fellowship, a lot of people are going to send emails off to professors at ETH Zurich and so these guys are going to be pretty selective and they have been asked to only select one candidate during each selection process so that the fellows are equitably distributed among the different professors. Now let's see some of the things which are required as far as this fellowship is concerned. The main thing is that there has to be synergy between the host, professor, his group and the fellow who is applying. So synergy can mean here that you can have a common pursuit or you can have complementary pursuit. For example, you may be a theoretician and this professor and his group are experimental people and so you could go there and complement their work or it could be that this person is also a theoretician, you are a theoretician and together you sit together and come up with some new and beautiful concepts about research for the future. So again the hope here is that this fellowship is going to substantially advance research in your area. Now priority is given to candidate who propose their own project. So again here the expectation is the candidate proposes his own project but of course this has to be in conjunction with the host because the host professor is giving you space, is providing mentoring to you and of course this hosting is only going to be useful to you if he or she also knows a lot about your problem. So you can think of some problems in your research field already if you have done a PhD many of the problems will be fresh on your mind whenever you do a PhD keep in mind as to what are the open problems in your field and if you have done a PhD in a certain subject at the end of the thesis you often write a section on possible future work and this gives you revelations about what are the problems which you can address in your postdoctoral work. So this will give you some ideas as to what type of proposal to write. Now the application has to be drafted by the applicant himself and there should have not been any collaboration between the fellow or the prospective fellow and the professor. So again it's not something where you have already been working with this professor for several years in some different capacity and you are approaching him for the ETH Zurich fellowship. So here the aim is that you are a candidate who does not really know the work of the professor or has not worked with the professor to a large extent before. Maybe you have met him in some conference, that's okay. 
but it's not expected that you have done research with him, written papers with him and so on. So that will make sure that the work is novel and it is orthogonal to whatever has been done before by you and the professor. Now this fellowship is for a two year period and this two year period cannot be prolonged. There is a 25% success rate in this fellowship. There is some advantage given to people from different genders and backgrounds which are diverse. So essentially, if you are somebody who belongs to a community or a group or a race of people who are not well represented in the scientific and research system, then some advantages may accrue to you. The deadlines are 1 March and 1 September of each calendar year. Now, what do you need to have? You need to hold a PhD or complete the PhD in the next six months and your PhD should be within two years before you apply to this fellowship. So essentially your scientific age should be two years or less. Scientific age being the age uh, which you have accrued after you have finished your PhD. So this is something which people often use to make decisions in these kind of matters. So let's come to the basic thing now. What's your salary? So essentially the first year your stipend is going to be CHF 105,000 and the second year your stipend is going to be CHF 110,200 and so totally they are going to pay you about 215,000 CHF or Swiss franc. So this is again very substantial amount of money as far as postdoctoral fellowships are concerned and so suddenly this is one of the best paying fellowships for postdocs as far as many fields are concerned. Now, of course, one of the reasons could be that ETH Zurich is primarily technological. So it is likely that many of the people who are applying for this postdoc could also avail themselves of some job in the industry, in the private sector, in research labs and so on. So they could have gone on and worked in corporations, but instead they are going and doing postdoctoral fellowships. So they are being given a very decent salary. Now there is an additional CHF 10,000 per year given for travel, for research. So it is expected that you will go to some conferences, you will present your research there, you will interact with people, you will build your network and so on. Now when I read this uh, fellowship in greater detail, I see that it is mostly meant for people who are outside Switzerland. So essentially for international scholars. And essentially, if you have done your PhD from ETH, this is not a fellowship for you. And also, you should not have stayed during the last 12 months in Switzerland or have been hanging around in Switzerland. So essentially, I think one of the aims of this fellowship is to encourage international talent to come to Switzerland and do their postdoc research there. And after that, they may either choose to stay in Switzerland, join some university research lab or company or they can go back to their home countries or a different country because remember research is very global so you can always carry your papers and your suitcase to any place in the world and continue with your research. Now one of the requirements here is that you should have one journal paper from your PhD that is at least or you could have a prize for your PhD so again there are many universities which give a best PhD thesis prize. So if you have got one of these, that's also going to look very good on your thesis. Of course, I have propounded a theory that three to five journal papers always looks good for a PhD. So if you are somebody with that type of paper, it will look even better. Make sure the papers are in good journals. So they could be, for example, in journals of the web of science or in society journals such as Royal Society, IEEE, SIAM, the American Physical Society, AIAA and so on because society journals always look good to most committees. So again in all these cases journal reputation may be more important than just the impact factor of the journal. Now there is going to be a selection committee here of course a group of professors, senior professors who are going to deliberate and decide on each case. You have to write this research proposal which you sent to them and this research proposal has to be written in conjunction with your host. So generally I would say that this postdoc is a very good opportunity for most people. You are going to hear within two months about a possible interview. So there is a 15 minute interview 
and most likely they are going to ask you questions to describe your research to summarize your research proposal and test your basic communication skills and to validate if you are a real person because again they don't want any impersonation type of situations here and after four months of applying you are likely to hear back from them if you have got the fellowship or not the entire process is electronically handled so you don't have any problem you can essentially apply to this fellowship and get it and then you can go to switzerland and then you can spend a good amount of time in switzerland doing your research so again the eth zurich fellowship a very good fellowship for science and technology type of people and remember there is a 25 percent success rate so i would say the success rate is pretty decent one journal publication that's of course a minimum many people feel that one journal publication should be a minimum for a phd thesis to be given but not more than that so i think they are going to rely more on the novelty of your proposal the interesting things you have come up in the plan with your host and of course one of the most difficult parts of getting this fellowship as any is to impress a host professor to host your visit and like i mentioned many times before you have to start work on that many years before you finish your phd through networking processes through citing people in your work through figuring out who are the top people in your field and so on and also attend an international conference where you can meet some of these people shake their hands and let them know about your existence as far as this physical world is concerned because i know some people who even publish a lot of papers but people in fact are not even sure they exist in reality because they have never met them so that's sometimes very important because humans are sociological creatures and they are prone to actually deal with people they actually know so that was my take today on the eth zurich postdoctoral fellowship i hope you enjoyed this video and i have put a lot of b-roll on switzerland here so you are certainly going to get motivated to apply for this fellowship and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then